Ah, but if human beings believe that they are free, then they will produce much more for their farmers. The best way to maintain this illusion of freedom is to put some of the livestock on the payroll of the farmer. Those cows that become dependent on the existing hierarchy will then attack any other cows who point out the violence, hypocrisy, and immorality of human ownership. Officers positioned Grant face first on the floor with one officer near his head, a second near his back, and a third officer standing nearby. There appeared to be a brief struggle. Then, a two-year veteran BART officer stands, draws his weapon, and fires. Freedom is slavery, and slavery is freedom. If you can get the cows to attack each other, whenever anybody brings up the reality of their situation, then you don't have to spend nearly as much controlling them directly. Those cows who become dependent upon the stolen largesse of the farmer will violently oppose any questioning of the virtue of human ownership and the intellectual and artistic classes, always and forever dependent upon the farmers, will say to anyone who demands freedom from ownership, you will harm your fellow cows. The livestock are thus kept enclosed by shifting the moral responsibility for the destructiveness of a violent system to those who demand real freedom. The third phase is to invent continual external threats so that the frightened livestock cling to the protection of the farmers. This system of human farming is now nearing its end. The terrible tragedies of modern Western economic systems has occurred not in spite of, but because of, past economic freedoms. The massive increases in Western wealth throughout the 19th century resulted from economic freedoms. And it was this very increase in wealth that fed the size and power of the state. Whenever the livestock become exponentially more productive, you get a corresponding increase in the number of farmers and their dependents. The growth of the state is always proportional to the preceding economic freedoms. Economic freedoms create wealth, and the wealth attracts more thieves and political parasites, whose greed then destroys the economic freedoms. In other words, freedom metastasizes the cancer of the state. The government that starts off the smallest will always end up the largest. This is why there can be no viable and sustainable alternative to a truly free and peaceful society. A society without political rulers, without human ownership, without the violence of taxation and statism. To be truly free is both very easy and very hard. We avoid the horror of our enslavement because it is so painful to see it directly. We dance around the endless violence of our dying system because we fear the attacks of our fellow livestock. But we can only be kept in the cages we refuse to see. Wake up. To see the farm is to leave it. Rather interesting, huh? And they'll use this two-party system because we think they're fighting each other. Yet as they change parties and parties take control of different things and they go back and forth, the ship heads the same direction. They still do the same thing the other guys did and they all of a sudden gets quiet. And they attack the people who are in charge who make the, you know, unconstitutional, you know, programs. And then later on they say, oh, but they were good. They served the country. Like, um, like, like Teddy Kennedy. <laughs> you know, oh, the lion of the Senate. I mean, come on. 
okay, as we look at this stuff, okay, and you look at your previous presidents, now Bush is on his book tour and stuff, and Clinton was out doing his tour thing, and Bush and Clinton are sitting together selling you some other program now on the, on the TV, and once again, they slowly enslave you. And the important thing was they get you to fight each other and to turn in your neighbor. This is all very interesting. So anyway, here we go. Um, here's a little video, and I want you to catch this, and I'm going to try to, you know, we're going to try to hit you a couple times with this, and this is called the Walmart Invasion. This is Alex Jones showing you that Janet Napolitano now wants to be on a telescreen at the checkouts at Walmart, and it turns out she's going to be other places. So here you go. And you may think it's a joke, but this is real. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security begins with hometown security. Well, it's here, 1984 in America. This is the straw that breaks the camel's back. There is no doubt that we're in deep trouble as a society. The head of Homeland Security, Big Sis, Janet Napolitano, has now come out and announced that over 800 Walmarts in the next month are going to install telescreens at the checkout scanner with different federal uh, orders uh, to spy on the other people shopping. That's why I'm pleased that Walmart is helping to make our communities more safe and secure. If you see something suspicious in the parking lot or in the store, say something immediately. Homeland Security is putting up billboards all over the country that say if you see something suspicious, communicate it. Okay, well I'm going to communicate something to you, Homeland Security. I see it suspicious that trillions of dollars have come up missing and the private Federal Reserve won't tell Congress where it's gone and it turns out it's foreign banks and corporations. I find all the corruption in government that's growing out of control to be suspicious. No wonder you want to distract us with all your fables about terrorist boogeymen. For anybody who studied history, this is completely obvious. We are going into hardcore tyranny. Report suspicious activity to your local police or sheriff. If you need help, ask a Walmart manager for assistance. This is Big Brother on steroids. And folks, this is not a surprise to people that have been reading our sites because Homeland Security for at least two years has been on record starting these Viper teams and, and checkpoints in Boston and New York City and Miami. It's suddenly it's on the local news showing them doing the grope downs, grabbing people's genitals, patting them down on the streets of America. This is wrong on so many fronts. It's a violation of the 10th Amendment. Tower, Tampa police and federal government's agencies are teaming up to keep your family safe. It's the sort of security we've seen a lot of since 9-11. Now, here at the bus station. It's all part of what Homeland Security calls Viper, for visible intermodal prevention and response. This way, us and our partners are ready to move in at a moment's notice. Folks, it doesn't get any more Big Brother 1984 than this. But it's not going to be Big Brother. It literally is Big Sis when you're checking out, looking down on you, telling you to spy on people around you, injecting paranoia into the society. This is worse than those terror threat uh, levels they had. And, and, and now the former head of Homeland Security, Ridge, has gone public saying they would issue those for political purposes. A vigorous, some might say dramatic, discussion ensued. Ashcroft strongly urged an increase in the threat level and was supported by Rumsfeld. There was absolutely no support for that position within our department, that's Homeland Security. None. I wondered, is this about security or politics? This is our nation turning into an East German Stasi society. And now the system doesn't care. I mean, Wired Magazine, feds warrantlessly tracking Americans' credit cards in real time with no warrants, completely illegal. They don't care, they're announcing it. The Wall Street Journal comes out and says, is your video game machine watching you? And goes on to admit that the new Microsoft Connect system face scans you and has microphones on board and can identify everybody in your home. Our culture has been so conditioned to accept Big Brother that Schools in Pennsylvania and other states come right out and say, yeah, the government issued laptops that we give you. We're watching you at home when you're in bed. Make no mistake, this is the story of America's enslavement. If we will put up with this, we will go along with anything. And notice this is happening as the economy implodes. Law enforcement sent my office, the Homeland Security and MIAC reports, over a year and a half ago where the government's internal documents admit 90 plus percent of Homeland Security funding is for gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, returning veterans. The big secret is 
This Homeland Security system is for the American people. And we had all better come together and defend the Bill of Rights and Constitution or it's over for our society. Again, it is not my opinion that Homeland Security is already on the streets of America. And now they've purchased hundreds of high-powered X-ray vans driving around looking through our walls and our cars. That's on record in Forbes. Uh, they've now purchased dozens of these huge 18-wheeler tractor trailers for football games and music events where Homeland Security is going to make you march through these. I mean, this is total takeover of society. Under the Future Attribute Screening Technologies, or FAST program, the Department of Homeland Security is developing innovative physiological and behavioral screening technologies to streamline the screening process at security checkpoints. The mobility of the FAST demonstration laboratory allows security officials to quickly and efficiently establish security boundaries inside the screening mobile module a suite of real-time non-invasive sensors measure behavioral and physiological indications of malintent or the intent or desire to cause harm. We've got to stop conforming to this tyranny. We've got to recognize how dangerous it is to our society. Imagine what's coming next if we go along with this outrage. And one more point. If you don't like what Walmart's doing with these telescreens and this whole Big Brother system, call them and let them know that you're not going to be shopping at their stores until they kick the federal government out of them. Thank you for doing your part to help keep our hometowns safe. So that's the kind of future you've, we're heading for, huh? This is what we're looking at. This is the way it's going. Hmm. Now, think about this bait and switch, though, once again. They started off telling you it was Muslims in caves with turbans on their head. And now they're telling you, we have to feel and grope your wife's breasts. We have to feel your children's testicles before you, the American, flies. We have to track every credit card transaction you do. We now have to control your health from, you know, cradle to grave. And yes, now we got to admit there are going to be death panels. Yeah. Uh, now what else? Well, we got to run your economy. We got, you know, we got to bail out the banks. Does the robber barons mean anything for those old people? Do you remember the term, the robber barons? So once again, how did they sell you this enslavement? How do they keep you enslaved? How do they keep you attacking the other players and not looking at the people really pulling the strings? It starts making you wonder whether or not has the propaganda been so great that it's hard to see, that we've either put blinders on both sides and we can't see it, and or repetition you know, I think it was Hitler who said, if you tell a big enough lie over and over and over, the people eventually believe it. Have you been lied to? Are you willing to allow this to happen to your children and your grandchildren? What will you leave? Better question, on what side of history do you intend to be on? If you could make a choice and you could fight for liberty and freedom, would you? Would you start fighting now? Would you start caring about this constitutional republic and maybe, you know, getting the criminals and pirates is probably the best term, let alone watching your country slowly, okay, be being taken over by offshore corporations? Was it foreign banks that got your tax money through the TARP program? Could it be? So, um, what can you do? Resist. Start maybe even reading, maybe studying a little bit of history. And also, too, as they bring this 1984, you know, Orwellian world to you, where they're going to watch you on street corners with cameras, where they're going to have fusion centers, don't believe me, ask Sergeant McGrath of the Sharon Police Department, because he's now the new Department of Homeland Security liaison person. Ask him next time you meet him on the street, hey, what's a fusion center? Do we in Massachusetts have a fusion center? Is the CIA involved in the fusion center? Is the Army involved in the fusion center? Can they track all my phone calls, cell phone, this and that? I mean, go through the list. Do you need this totalitarian and, you know, regime? Why? Why are they creating a police state? Good question for, you know, Officer McGrath. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching The Real Story. I appreciate you tuning in. And for homework, find out what is a fusion center? Do we have one in Massachusetts? Who is responsible for overseeing the fusion center? Hmm. Do you like the CIA operating in your country? Is that legal for them to do? Hmm. 
Thanks for watching. Once again, God bless you and your family. God bless this constitutional republic and down with the new world order.